Hey guys, let's see how we can solve question 16 from the chapter 7 of the Hibbler textbook, Injury Mechanics. And, this, and in this one, we need to determine the internal normal force, shear force, and bending moment at point C of this beam that we can see. So as always, we're going to start with the free body diagram of the whole beam in order to find the reactions that we have at two different supports of A and B. And after that, uh, we can do a section, either go with the left side of the beam at point C or the right part in order to find the uh, normal force, shear force, and the bending moment. So let's start with the free body diagram of the whole beam. So we have the force BY in here. We have a pin at point A which means we have both X and Y component and at support B we only have Y component since it's a roller it can move freely in X direction here is our X and Y so since we don't consider any friction for the roller so there is no X component in here but if we look at this we'll see that we have a distributed force which is consists of one rectangle and a little right triangle on top which is what we have in here so for the rectangle part i'm going to shade it in blue so we're going to have the area of the rectangle which we know this side is 200 uh, newton per meter and the other side is 400 newton per meter so if you want to find this right uh the rectangle that we have we're going to have uh, first of all, we know that centroid of the rectangle is exactly at the center of uh, this point, which is basically the point C. And for finding the force, we have uh, the area of the rectangle. We know one side is 200, and that will be Newton per meter, and the other side would be the base, which is 3 plus 3, or 6. So we're going to have 1,200 Newton. This will be meter, so the middle would be cancel out, and we'll end up with two twelve hundred force applying exactly at the center, so three meter from here and three meter. So that's pretty much everything for the rectangle, but we have a right triangle on top of that, which is what we have in here. I'm gonna shade it in red. We know the centroid of the right triangle is. Um, somewhere in here, which will be two thirds of the base from point A. So two thirds of the base is six. It's going to be four meter to the left, and I'm going to show the force maybe in here. So we'll be four meter to the left, or two meter um, away from point B. And we have the same thing. This time we have the area of the right triangle, obviously. So for finding that, we need this side, which is basically 400 minus 200, which will be 200 Newton per meter. So we have 1200 times the base of that right, uh, right triangle, which is six divided by two. And that's gonna give us 600 Newton for the force that is applying from the right triangle part of this distributed force. So that's pretty much everything. We should be able to find all the unknowns. We are in equilibrium. Sum of all forces equals zero. And we have the same for moment about any point that we want to. So let's go with our force equation. Let's start with the X. If we look at this, we'll see there is only AX in X direction, which means AX is actually zero. And we can do our moment equation about point B in order to find the AY counterclockwise is positive as always. So we have the moment of AY, which is going to be in this direction, clockwise, so negative AY times 6. We have the moment of the 1200 force, that's going to be counterclockwise, so plus... 1200 times uh, the vertical distance to the line of action from B to the 1200 force, which is this distance, which we figured it's three meter 
and we have the moment of the red force in here that's going to be also counterclockwise so positive 600 times the distance from red to by which is 2 equals 0 so basically our ay in here would be 3600 plus 1200 divided by 6 which is going to give us this will be 4800 and that's going to be 800 newton no negative sign that shows that a y is upward so now that we have this we can just pick this is our point c we can just do our section in here at point c and uh, draw the free body diagram for the left side and we should be able to find the internal forces and bending moment for C so we can consider one normal force NC one shear force we're going to call it VC and one bending moment MC we figured AY is 800 newtons and now if you pick this part we have to watch for the distributed force that we have so we have half of that distributed force so we basically have this part again we have another rectangle and another right triangle on top of it so for the rectangle everything is the same it's just this time the whole beam is three meter so it will be 1.5 meter from each side and will be the area of the re rectangle 200 times uh this time the base is three so it will be 600 newtons uh, we're gonna have the same scenario for our right triangle so we need to figure out this little distance for our new right triangle that we have so we know the base is three meter but we have to figure this side but like if we look at the bigger picture we have this part 200 and we know the ratio of this side over this side is the same ratio of this part divided by this so three over six is equal to we can call it a a over 200 which means our A is 100 uh, Newton per meter. So now actually the right triangle that we have on top of here. So the force would be somewhere in here. Again, two thirds of the distance from the left side, two thirds of the base, which was three or two meter here and one meter in here uh, from point C. And the force this time would be 100 times 3 divided by 2 or 150 newtons. And again, the 100 meter is coming from these ratios that we had in here. 3 over 3 plus 3, 6 is equal to A over the 200 in here. So we have the same story in here too. We're going to use our equilibrium equation. Sum of all forces in X equals 0. The normal force is the only unknown that we have in X, which means it will be zero. We're going to do sum of all forces in Y equals zero. We have 800 minus 600 minus 150 minus VC is equal to zero. And this will be 750. So our VC is basically... 50 newtons no negative sign so the direction is correct and the last step is the bending moment about c counterclockwise positive so we consider a counterclockwise moment for point c so mc plus we have the moment of the yellow force which is going to be in this direction so it's a counterclockwise moment plus 150 times the distance would be one meter or what we have in here. 
So we have the moment of 600 force, the distance would be 1.5, and we have the moment of the 800 Newton. This moment is going to be in this direction, so it's clockwise negative. 800 times the length of the beam, 3 equals 0, so our MC would be 2400 minus 600 times 1.5 is 900 minus 150. Let's calculate this. So 2400 minus 900 minus 150, that's going to be 1350 uh, Newton meter. No negative sign that shows our assumption was correct. And the moment is actually counterclockwise. And this is going to be the final answer for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.